Akan Corlan, you're at Dutlan, Akmik, the Reverend, Aaron Muratash, Slatan, you on the Stakulu, down the Ulvoran, Filahar, Kulu, Akmik, the Atako, Donna Lahain, Kalan, Hunnik, and Tirsha Fos. So Groig Nakinti, Tommy, the Yenov and Shah, and Nish, and Dragamig and Dulkan Keen, the Tardanta, Gring and Ashunta, Nogodurimid, say Akmik, and he is far doing Fain, and Nadunta, Tai Chap Fos. The Reverend Eric Tavak Tariv, a bankless Narawan, the Carta, a Yen of Mother La Pulisa, Akhmirta. Just before Christmas, the government published its strategy for building Ireland's smart economy, a framework for sustainable economic renewal. Its primary objective was to outline a pathway forward for the Irish economy, which acknowledged the severe short term challenge while focusing on how we could return to sustainable growth in the medium term. At that time, the government committed to engage intensively with social partners on how we could develop and implement that framework, beginning with the need to devise a credible time frame in which to close the gap in the public finances. We decided to work together with a specific focus on agreeing an approach to manage those challenges we now face. And those challenges are immense, as we pointed out last week. We are experiencing the most profound global economic crisis in 70 years. And in addition to the effects of an international financial and banking crisis and a worldwide recession, the Irish economy is suffering from the aftermath of a large housing and construction boom and a loss of cost competitiveness after a period of sustained growth. This is being exacerbated by the decline in the value of sterling relative to the euro, which is placing extreme pressure on Ireland's base of exporting companies. Intensive discussions with social partners on these challenges resulted in an agreement last week on a framework for a pact for stabilisation, social solidarity and economic renewal. And in this framework, the government and social partners agreed that we would only achieve the prosperous future that the Irish people deserve if, during these extremely difficult times, we take urgent and radical action to restore stability to the public finances, to maximise short-term economic activity and employment and to improve competitiveness. This approach is rooted in the belief that stable public finances are essential for the future of the economy. Every action that we take in the period ahead must be motivated by that objective. Without stable finances, there will be no economic recovery. The framework agreed with the social partners endorses the fiscal plan submitted to the European Commission by the government. I apologise, but what you're saying is very important, and I'm wondering if the normal convention of a script being circulated is intended this afternoon. It would facilitate a meaningful response from this side of the House. Yes, it is being facilitated and beyond the way. Uh, the framework agreed with the social partners endorses the fiscal plan submitted to the European Commission and it's to work, working to get to eliminate the current budget deficit by 2013. The difficulty in achieving this cannot be overstated. The social partners have agreed that a credible start requires an immediate adjustment of the order of €2 billion. Euro. This must be followed with adjustments of €4 billion in 2010 and again in 2011, €3.5 billion in 2012 and €3 billion in 2013. Today we are announcing the first steps towards achieving those targets and coming to the House at the first available opportunity to do so. During intensive negotiations with the social partners over the last week, progress was made on a, on a range of issues under the framework. In the context of the discussions, the government tabled proposals to achieve a full year saving of €1.4 billion Euro through the introduction of a public service pension levy. The unions decided that they were not in a position to agree to that proposal. While this is regrettable, it does not mean that the engagement with social partners has failed. The overall framework has been agreed. The need for an immediate adjustment of €2 billion Euro on a credible basis was also agreed. <coughs> the need for a significant contribution to be made by the public service pay bill in achieving that adjustment is also agreed, as are links to the government's strategy for economic renewal published in December. I am grateful to all those involved in discussions for the quality and sincerity of the engagement that took place over the past number of weeks. The government considered the position at its meeting this morning and took the necessary decisions in respect to the fiscal adjustments required, as I indicated, we would in the absence of a final agreement. Our decisions take account of views expressed during those discussions. These adjustments will deliver in excess of €2 billion Euro on a full-year basis and represent a huge political, economic and social challenge for every single person in this country and will be achieved through the following full-year expenditure savings. €1.4 billion Euro on the public service pay bill. 
great bulk of which will be achieved through a new pension-related payment to be made by all public servants, including employees of local authorities, with a small element of the total to be secured through reductions in travelling and subsistence rates and other savings. In addition, the increases provided for under the Review and Transition Agreement with effect from the 1st of September 2009 and the 1st of June 2010 will not now be paid on those dates. This will deliver savings of €1 billion Euro further in 2010, €95 million Euro through a reduction in overseas development aid, €80 million Euro through a general reduction of the order of 8% in all personal fees, for example, in the legal and medical areas, €75 million Euro through a reduction in the early childcare supplement from €1,100 Euro to €1,000 per year and a restriction to children under five, €140 million Euro through general administrative efficiency and savings, including those arising from the non-payment of the scheduled 1st of September pay increase arising under towards 2016 agreement, through further savings in advertising, care and consultancy, and through savings on defence equipment. €300 million through an across-the-board reduction in 2009 budget exchequer capital allocations. We're in a position to reduce the €8.2 billion capital allocation by €300 million because of the fact that we are achieving far more output for less money than was the case in the past due to the fact that competitive tenders for capital projects are coming in at prices of 20% less than before in many cases. We therefore expect to maintain the level of output on capital projects while achieving this saving. I wish to make the House aware that legislation will urgently be brought forward to give effect to the pension-related measures which I have outlined. This will include legislative provisions to realise the payroll saving in respect of local authority staff for the benefit of the Exchequer through a reduction in the Exchequer allocation to the local government fund. Implementation will be discussed in the nor normal way with the Public Service Committee of the Irish Congress of Trade Unions. The government has been guided by the principles of fairness and prudence in making these tough decisions. The new pension-related payment will be graduated to reflect different income levels in the public service, while our other expenditure adjustments seek to ensure all sectors of society contribute on an equitable basis. In addition, we have already introduced highly progressive tax-raising measures in the 2009 budget, which will raise an estimated €2 billion, Euro, or 1% of GDP additional taxation. The income levy targets higher incomes while protecting those on lower incomes, social welfare, or in receipt of redundancy payments. 20% of the money raised will come from those with incomes over a quarter of a million. In addition, those with second homes will pay tax on those homes for the first time. Today's measures built in our decisions last July to secure an initial round of savings, which delivered €440 million in 2008 and €1,000 million Euro in 2009. These included a 3% payroll reduction by the end of 2009 and reductions in spending on consultancies, advertising and other measures. We introduced further administrative efficiencies and savings in the October budget, including a proposed reduction in the number of state agencies. We will continue to target expenditure and tax measures on those most able to bear the cost, and we will support those who are most vulnerable in our society, consistent with a responsible budgetary policy and an assessment of what is sustainable in the current circumstances. We are conscious of the many challenges people face, but it is in everyone's interest that we deal responsibly with the situation and safeguard the country's future prospects. In doing so, we will utilise the social partnership process, which is about engagement and the sharing of analysis, as well as the forging of specific agreements. The social partnership discussions over the past few weeks has deepened our shared understanding of the challenges facing the economy and the appropriate direction for a response. The Tarnistin, Mr. Finance and myself have devoted a large amount of time since the beginning of January to these discussions, both in formal meetings and through many informal contacts and discussions, including over several nights and weekends. No greater priority could have been given to these efforts, and I believe that the social partners themselves would acknowledge that fact. The inability of the Congress of Trade Unions to agree to the government's proposals does not mean that the partnership process has failed. The overall framework remains in place and will be built on. The Congress has indicated that it is available to continue discussions on the implementation of the overall framework, as have the other social partners. The government will continue to engage with them over coming weeks as it implements the strategy agreed in the framework document regarding support for enterprises, refining price regulation in the, in the energy sector, stabilising the financial and banking sector to meet the needs of the Irish economy and society, implementing a proactive labour market approach appropriate to Irish conditions to support vulnerable employment and those who lose their jobs, developing a new national pensions framework and completing the reform and economic renewal agenda to which we are committed. 
The decisions taken by government laid the foundations for the next phase of our development. Despite the budgetary constraints, the government is maintaining proportionately the largest capital investment programme in Europe at over 5% of GNP. We will continue to commit considerable expenditure on roads, on schools and on housing. We are investing significantly in important infrastructure and research and development to drive competitiveness, growth and jobs in the future. We are proportionately the largest investment programme in the EU. And it's an investment in the future as well as being our own stimulus package for the Irish economy. We've also decided today to reprioritise 150 million of capital expenditure to employment intensive activities in the areas of school building and energy efficiency improvements. The biggest tragedy of the current difficult circumstances is the loss of jobs. Protecting jobs to the best extent possible and supporting those who become unemployed fundamental importance. The government will continue to deploy every means at our disposal to help minimise the impact of the credit crisis and the severe downturn in global markets on employment prospects in this country. The government is also working to significantly improve access for unemployed persons to job search, training and education and employment programmes. Relevant ministers and their departments are working together to maximise opportunities for upskilling and reskilling so that people will be better placed to avail of new job opportunities when, where they become available. Immediate steps are being taken to adapt to the unprecedented pace and scale of change including increasing the monthly capacity of job search from 6,500 to 12,250 persons to assist individuals through the provision of guidance on employment, education, training opportunities and development, a planned creation of an additional 51,000 training places for newly unemployed people, design and delivery of further courses in sustainable energy and green technology techniques, and work towards providing redundant apprentices with opportunities to complete their apprenticeships. The government will bring forward further measures in these areas which ensure that we get maximum impact from resources available and that innovative approaches are used to maintain people in employment as well as assisting those who lose their jobs. As I stated before, this further saving of €2 billion Euro is the next step in stabilising our public finances. We will continue to work with social partners on the basis of the framework we agreed last Friday to address the short-term issues in order to maximise economic activity and employment in the short term and help those who lose their jobs. The government is committed to working with all stakeholders to confront the challenges this country faces in a global recession. We will provide the necessary hope and direction and we will take the difficult decisions now in the interest of the country and our people.